Hey, what's up guys? John here. We're stepping into some very uncertain times. And I have a big question for you because I'm asking myself this question. I'm wondering if I'm on to something here. In December, in November, generally that's you know the, the worst that it's been for the last two years, right? December, the winter months. Well, now what we're seeing is we're seeing things pop up again right now. Look at the headlines in New York. Look at the headlines in Los Angeles. Look at the headlines in North Korea. Look at them in China. Look at them all over the world, right? Even in Sri Lanka right now, they're running out of petrol. And they said that it's going to be the toughest months of their lives going forward. The big question I have is, you know, now we're in May. What's going to happen in September and October and November as we step into this again at a moment when we're increasing interest rates and the supply chain issues are getting worse and worse and worse and we step into this affordability problem? To me, it's a no brainer. What's going to happen is that we're going to begin going forward into this affordability crisis and then potentially come September or come August or come October, right around there, we could be stepping into a massive, massive problem. We have to remember also, this recovery, the stock market, sure it was fueled by a lot of money put into the system, but it was also heavily fueled by investors thinking that it's going to be a one-way trip right to the moon and we're gonna, everyone's gonna get rich, everyone's gonna make a ton of money. A lot of people did, right? But what was the real foundation of that was that it's only gonna be a short-term problem and we're gonna see a solution. So nothing to fear, let's continue moving forward. Let's invest. But now what are investors seeing? They're seeing their stocks get killed. Stock market's getting crushed. NASDAQ, Dow Jones, everything's pulling back. A lot of the big, big companies people had a lot of faith in are down 20, 30, 40%. And when we have this moment with interest rates rising, people starting to get a little bit more pessimistic the optimism is leaving the room people are a little bit more cautious about what's happening are we going to see a slow deterioration of this economy and then we come into the winter we're going to then see a real big high level of fear that's the big question i have for myself and i'm wondering what you guys think are we going to be stepping into this massive problem come in you know 90 days 120 days that's right around the corner because if so, is this the best time to hoard cash, even though we're in an inflationary environment, to hoard cash, to cut down on liabilities, any luxuries that really don't supply any real value to your life, sell them, hoard money, increase your credit score, and really build out a strong plan? Because in times of fear, when people are really, really scared, what happens? People sell things, not out of logic, but they sell them out of survive. They need to survive. It's all out of uh, a survivor mentality. So it's not just like a, an emotional sale. Like they sell it because they have to sell it. And so that sale price is dependent on who has money and who's willing to buy what for that item, right? So when we have that fear come into the economy, it's going to be a good time to, I think, sit on a lot of cash. And even though you know we are in this inflationary environment, it's probably going to get a hell of a lot worse before it gets any better. Oil prices are going to continue to soar. You're going to want some money for that. But there's going to be a lot more cost coming into the market. But what I see happening is the, the winter months coming forward are going to be way worse than the last two winters. I think that we could potentially see a real big pullback in the real estate market. I think we could see a lot of people getting really just back to brass tacks and getting back to things that are important and leaving this uh, luxury lifestyle that maybe many uh, really extended themselves to be able to afford. They're going to pull back a little bit into an affordable place. But I do think that when we look at these headlines, we really have to, you know, a lot of people read them like, ah, whatever, whatever. It's not important. It is important. And it's important because this is what's being told, right? So this is what's happening. This is what's being told. We can only realize like we're in May right now. What's going to happen in the next few months, right? Are we going to, is this going to continue? If it is, What's the best way to position yourself for that, right? It's probably, probably not to be highly leveraged in consumer debt with adjustable rate mortgages as interest rates continue to soar. That's probably something you want to avoid, if possible. This could be a great moment even to do a debt consolidation loan. If you have you know, three or four different credit cards and maybe they're at 15, 18, 20, or 25% interest, maybe you can consolidate them with the right lender and, and find a good solution for yourself. Or this could be a great time to potentially sell a car. You know, maybe you have a new BMW or Mercedes that you really don't need, 
but you know you wanted to impress the Joneses with it, maybe that's a good time to sell it and maybe cut back a little bit. This is why I'm saying we're, I think, we're basically in the practice round right now is what I'm seeing in this economy. We're in the practice round and the real game is about to start. And if you want to win the real game, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need competitive advantage on your business. You're going to need very low debt levels. You're going to need high cash reserves. You're going to need good credit. You're going to need a good strategy. That's ultimately what is going to be, I believe, the ingredients to winning the game. If, you know, if the game can do one, I think ultimately we can win the game. It's all up to us. If we all say we're going to win the game, we're going to win the game. But it's up to everyone to kind of build out their own formula to win this upcoming game because it's going to be a real one. It's not going to be like the practice rounds like we've seen in the past. And so the best way to do this is to understand what is very likely to come so that way you can prepare for this. Because I'm seeing some real, real big things happen with wheat, with food production, with you know, like everything is deteriorating, all the supply chains. I'm seeing it across the board. I went to go get a coffee today. They didn't have the, uh, the syrup for the coffee or for the ice and a latte. Like, I, and this is happening in like multiple different places. And it's happening, I went to go get Thai food the other day. They didn't have uh, shrimp dumplings for my son. Like it's happening all, the, all over the place. I'm seeing you know, probably one out of three places, one out of two places. They don't have one of the items that I want to purchase. Right? And as we continue going down this road, supply chains start deteriorating even more and more of this fear is pushed out there talking about this. What's ultimately going to happen? Things are just going to get more expensive. It's going to get more challenging. Home builders are going to continue to pull back. Real estate investors are going to continue to pull back. A lot of people I think are going to continue to pull back if this does continue. We have to remember though, we're in May. We're in May and this is being pushed. Right? What will happen? in August, September, October, November, December. I mean, that's like half a year. That entire period is half a year. And we have some very big things coming uh, politically over the next you know, four to five, six months, right? So we have a lot, a lot on the plate, a lot on the table that's gonna be happening. So the big question I have is, how, what is the best way? What's the best way to position for this upcoming transfer, transfer wealth transfer? Because that's what it is. We're stepping into the biggest wealth transfer we've ever had in human history because what's ultimately been sold is that you want to borrow money, you want to invest, you want to invest, you want to take on riskier bets, uh, you want to just bet on things to go to the moon and people are highly leveraged and they've taken on a extreme amount of debt all under the principles that, hey, if, as long as it's financed by real estate, we can rent out the real estate and we'll get the income. But if everything else is going up, if food prices are skyrocketing, let's say they go up 2x or 3x and gas prices continue skyrocketing and insurance prices, car insurance prices are skyrocketing and employers are pulling back, what's ultimately going to happen? Something's going to have to give. Is it going to be food or is it going to be gasoline? Is there going to be rent? There's going to have to be some type of break in that, in that line. I don't think we're going to start to see rents continue to climb as we step into the next six months to a year. If anything, I, I think we're going to likely see some rents potentially pull back as landlords are seeking more stability. They might not seek so much the highest rent. They might seek, hey, who can pay me upfront five months deposit? Who can pay me upfront six months deposit? I'll, I'll give you a rent reduction for it. Like I think we're gonna start to see more of that as we kind of uh, step into an, a, an economy that's based a little bit more out of the true state of the world, what's happening, leaving this uh, euphoria where we were like untouchable. I think we're leaving that period and we're going to step into a period where investors and people that own property and rentals, they're going to be looking for the people that are going to be able to pay a large portion up front. And in return, they'll give them some perks and bonuses. I think we're going to start going to that as we start to see higher vacancies. We start to see a bigger pullback on uh, applicants for these nicer rentals. And I think we're going to see a lot more people defaulting on rentals as well. And as that happens, you know, landlords are going to be even more desperate to, to secure people that are going to give money up front. I know if I were a landlord in Los Angeles right now, I would want to lease that unit for a year and I'd want six months up front or nine months up front. I'd be willing to give a discount for that peace of mind, right? And I think that's going to continue to, to come. So as that happens, what is the best advice for all of us? Cash, credit, good business, great backup plans, low debt levels, all these things need to come to a head because when the opportunity comes, you're going to want to be well positioned for it because I think it's going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. I think that this situation, this problem could, could evolve over six months, a year, two years, three years, five years. I think even longer as we step into this uh, 
really, really big transfer of, of wealth and uh, everything that we've known is, you know, as American, right? Everything is going to be coming to a really, really big head. And I have a feeling it's going to be this winter. That's my gut instinct. I have a feeling it's going to be this winter, and I think it's going to be a slow deterioration until we get there. What do you think? And by the way, Jerome Powell has four more rate hikes coming from now until then. So this whole entire time, everything's just going to get so much more expensive. Adjustable rate mortgages, credit cards, auto loans. Everything is going to get much, much more expensive. And home builders, and uh, we're going to see more mortgage lender layoffs. We're going to see so much of a pullback from now until then. And I think we're going to start to see the real fear set in before you know it. But I'm curious, what do you think? Drop your comments below. Hit the like button. Subscribe here. Also subscribe to my second YouTube channel. It's going to be an interactive podcast and a really cool interactive show coming next week. Also LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. Everything's in the banner. I'll catch you guys later.